trying to uh, solve the problem I mentioned uh, in the previous section on the base low C divider vibrato uh, board right here. I got hooked to the output uh, an oscilloscope probe, uh, this side is to ground, and this side it's actually to the output for the low C um, to keyboard. Now this is just a capacitor because I noticed as I first hooked it up there was a DC offset and that takes that away and lets signal pass through so that I can read it on the scope. Um, spoiler alert, it actually is working now. I don't know if you can hear that well, but uh, I think just in fiddling with it, I must have completed a circuit that was maybe one of the connections was bad. But I'm still going to cut to the to the scope and show you all something pretty interesting. All right, on my scope here, I've got two traces. The top one in yellow is the output from the low C to walking base contacts. And the bottom one is simply a uh, waveform of the speaker, uh, the general output. I'm going to hit a D first. All right, you see the D and the sine wave on the bottom there. And if I go down to the C, you see both. I'm not sure why, but Vox treated the C differently from all the others. And that's a that's a trigger signal they have there. Uh, it might have something to do with the vibrato, I'm not sure. Either way, it's working right now. And uh, as you see, I play C, it's there. All the notes, only the output. And when I get up into the, into the organ section, waveform gets a lot more comp complex. Kind of cool. Now kind of like working on any old piece of equipment, be it an uh, organ or an old car or an appliance, often when you're uh, repairing it you come across problems you didn't know were there. I found this. Watch this. Hear that change? Yeah, and now the bass is really quiet. Now the bass is a little louder, but this is mellow again. There's something wrong in the power supply. I'm not exactly sure what, but now I'm going to get in there and figure it out. Okay, for the power supply, I've taken the cover off, and I've also removed a mounting bolt right there and a mounting bolt right there. And fortunately, the wires that go from the board, I'm sorry, from the supply to the board, are held in with these plugs. These which makes it really easy. You unplug them to the side. After you remove those bolts, just lift the whole thing out. Here, take this to the bench. All right, got this on the bench now, and the first thing I notice is this big gold capacitor. Now, when I tapped it earlier and uh, tone changed, that told me that it's reacting to a physical impulse, which tells me that. The problem is not going to be in one of the solid state things like one of these diodes or in the, uh, the this resistor here. So I'm thinking uh, it's going to be either in the transformer or the capacitor. More likely the capacitor. These electrolytic capacitors, you know, as they get older they don't work very well. Now this is a safety tip right here. Anytime you're dealing with a big capacitor like that, you never really know it's discharged. So what I got here is a big old, it's just a, a what's that? A, 2 ohm resistor or 25 watts and just a wire to it and I'm just going to hold it on there for about 10 seconds to make sure it's discharged and then I'm actually going to take the, the lead and make sure it's discharged like that. Now this is a double capacitor. You see the two leads down here on, on the left hand side. So I'm going to do this twice, one for the top lead and one for the bottom lead. And this way I know it will be completely discharged and it's safe to touch. So now it's, it's completely discharged. If you don't do that, you're likely to get a nice pop. And if you do it, you're safe. You see, touch, 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 all well. All right, so I'm gonna take this thing out and test it and see if, see if it uh, tests out okay. All right, once again, I put an ohm meter up to this capacitor after disconnecting one side from the circuit. So. Uh, this should be infinite, and we got about 3.6 kilo ohms. It was similar on the other side. Actually, I think a little, little uh, less after once it once it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Only about uh, let's see, 0.5 mega ohms. So yeah, yeah. It's getting lower and lower and lower. 
kind of bouncing around a little. Point is, this should be infinite. Um, when you first hook up an ohm meter to a capacitor, there will be a little bit of current that passes as it charges up. But once it gets charged, there should be no current at all. And uh, if there's a conductance, that you know it's, it's no good. So uh, this capacitor is gonna have to be replaced. It's a double capacitor. I actually printed out the schematic here for part of the power supply. And uh, this one gold capacitor uh, comprises these two right here. They appear to be a thousand microfarad. And I'll check the voltage on it, and I'll probably just replace it with two separate capacitors. Just for the purposes of illustration, I've got a capacitor here that I'm going to, uh, I know this one's new and good, and I'm going to do the same test with an ohm meter, and you'll see what happens. Okay, first there's a little bit of current, and then it settles down to infinite. O OL means overload. It's overloaded resistance, infinite resistance. That's a good capacitor, and that's what the gold one should have looked like, but it doesn't. So we're going to replace it. Okay, look, I have replaced that yellow capacitor, the gold capacitor, with two capacitors. This is a double capacitor, like I said before. And I happened to find at the local uh, parts outlet one with the, uh, two with the exact same um, rating and voltage rating, which was really nice. I also tested these two diodes. They're in great shape, and this resistor is fine. Um, I haven't tested a transformer, but I have no reason to think it's not working fine. I made a bit of an upgrade. Now, when these uh, first came out, there was a proprietary uh, plug in the back where you had the power cord plugged in. Now, by the time I got, on, got hold of this, that had been long gone. And uh, they replaced it with uh, just a, a, a plug and wire, but the insulation on this, on this wire is falling, falling apart. Uh, and it was the, the plug was a little dangerous anyway, so I replaced it with one of these called what I call computer plugs. I'm sure there's a, a good name for it, but now uh, if you ever need a if my if the owner ever needs a replacement cord, it'll be the easiest thing to find. And I grounded it. It was ungrounded before, so I got a good chassis ground, and I'm going to extend that ground uh, to this housing and to the rest of the board. So there's going to be a good improvement there, probably in terms of noise and certainly in terms of safety. I'm happy about that. Fantastic. We got the power supply reinstalled, hooked up, plugged in, turned on and everything, and... Sounding. And working great. I'm going to bring the oscilloscope up to show you all a couple things that I think are kind of interesting here. All right, first of all, I'm going to play just the bass notes. I don't know how well you can hear that, but as you can see, it's a nice sine wave. But as I go up, notice how the height of the sine wave gets smaller. It gets lower. That has to do with the dynamics of the speakers and our ears. It's kind of cool. If I add a little, a little bit of flavor to it with the flute, it gets more complicated. That's the bright. I'm going to re-trigger here. go up a little a little ways. I'm going to do an E octave up. That's with everything. Turn it off. Flute only. Bright only. A little hard to trigger on that one. That's the uh, brass re-trigger. There we go. And the mellow. And of course all together. It makes a nice... And of course as we go up, yeah, the amplitude is lower. But it doesn't really sound any loud any quieter. It just has to do with the way that the speakers and our ears respond. Well, that just about does it for this project. I really enjoyed working on this Vox Jaguar. Hope you enjoyed watching and maybe learned something along the way. See you next time.